Hey, my name is Mohan Kelker, and this is the second video of my energy reality series where I explain some of the important characteristics of fossil fuels. So what are fossil fuels? Fossil fuels are remains of prehistoric plants and animals which are subjected to thermal, chemical and physical processes. Over millions of years of geological time, the plants and animals are converted to fossil fuel because of chemical, physical changes in the original plants and animals. And as a result of that, there are three different fossil fuels which are created. We have coal, which is solid, we have oil or petroleum, which is mostly liquid, and natural gas, which is always in a gaseous phase. The chemical composition of the fossil fuels is mostly comprised of two important elements, which is carbon and hydrogen. The fossil fuels do contain other impurities and minerals but their percentage is normally small and they don't contribute to the energy which is generated as a result of burning the fossil fuels. The fossil fuels provide a source of energy because when you burn fossil fuels, both carbon and hydrogen, when combined with atmospheric oxygen, can produce energy. The two main byproducts of burning fossil fuels are carbon dioxide or CO2 which is a greenhouse gas. This results from burning coal, carbon and then water or H2O which results from burning hydrogen. When we compare coal versus oil versus natural gas in terms of their composition what we observe at least on a molar basis that coal contains two times as much carbon as hydrogen. Oil contains one ca carbon versus two proportions of hydrogen and natural gas contains one carbon and four times as much hydrogen. So the chemical composition of coal, oil and natural gas is significantly different from each other. Coal contains the highest amount of carbon versus hydrogen and natural gas contains the least amount of carbon compared to hydrogen. Now these are molar proportions that means the number of moles of carbon versus hydrogen which are present. If you look at the weight percentage of carbon versus hydrogen in coal, oil and natural gas, you'll find that the difference is even more magnified because carbon has much higher atomic weight than hydrogen. Carbon has a atomic weight of 12 versus hydrogen has an atomic weight of 1. So as a result of that, in coal, Almost 96% by weight is carbon and only 4% is hydrogen. In oil, 86% is present as carbon and only about 14% of the weight is present as hydrogen. And in natural gas, 75% of the weight is occupied by carbon and about 25% of the weight is occupied by hydrogen. Please remember that these compositions which I am presenting here are approximate. There is a wide variation in the composition of coal, oil and natural gas and these percentages can vary a great deal. However, understanding the differences between coal, oil and natural gas is important and that comes from the fact that the proportions of carbon and hydrogen are different in each of those three fossil fuels. The difference is even more magnified 
when we consider what happens when carbon and hydrogen are burnt. Typically, carbon generates lost less energy compared to hydrogen for the same amount of mass. As a matter of fact, if you look at the comparison between carbon and hydrogen, hydrogen generates almost four times as much energy for every pound burned compared to carbon. You can see that one pound of carbon roughly creates about 3600 of kilocalories, whereas one pound of hydrogen generates about 15,500 kilocalories. Just for comparison, an average human consumes about 2,500 kilocalories per day. Because coal contains more carbon than hydrogen, when we burn one pound of coal, it generates a lot less energy than when we burn one pound of natural gas. Again, from the left-hand side figure, you can very clearly see that coal generates about 3,200 kilocalories per pound. Oil generates about 4,700 kilocalories per pound. And natural gas generates about 6,000 kilocalories per pound. Not only that natural gas generates more energy than coal or oil, it also generates less carbon dioxide for every pound which is burned. And the reason is, again, that carbon is more prevalent in coal rather than natural gas. So if you look at how much CO2 is released when coal is burnt versus natural gas is burnt, you can see that for coal, it's about three and a half pounds of CO2 release for every pound of coal burnt. Oil generates about 3.1 pound of CO2 release for every pound of oil burnt and natural gas generates about 2.75 pounds of CO2 for every pound of natural gas. The difference between coal, oil and natural gas is even more magnified when you look at the amount of CO2 release for the same amount of energy. So for example, if we consider a constant source of energy or constant amount of energy and find out how much CO2 is released for a unit amount of energy, you could see that if you make an assumption that the coal generates about one unit of CO2 for certain amount of energy released, then natural gas generates about 0 0.47 amount compared to coal. In other words, for the same amount of energy generated, natural gas generates about half the CO2 compared to coal. This distinction becomes important when we consider the fact that the CO2 is the main greenhouse gas and it has the biggest impact on the temperature change on the earth. I hope you like this second video. If you like what I have stated, please subscribe to my channel so that when the next video is released, you will be notified. Thank you.